Hey guys, welcome to this video on solving basic exponential equations. So we're going to so be solving things that look like this. I do call this basic and I will explain kind of what that means in a moment. And if you've never watched my videos before, you're going to want to pause and try the examples. And there are always free guided notes available at DividingConquerMath.com. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. So I've got this example, 2 to the 4x equals 8 to the x plus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to write out just general directions for the, the approach for these. And then we'll talk about how that applies to this problem. So the first thing we want to do, rewrite each side of the equation with the same base if possible. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean in, for this problem. So I've got 2 to the 4x. What you're going to be focusing on is the base here, so 2. You can't rewrite 2 in any way, so we're just going to leave that side alone. So this is 2 to the 4x. However, 8, 8 I can write in exponential form. I can rewrite 8 as 2 to the 3rd. And ideally, that's what you're going to have happen, is that you get something with the same base. But what do you do with this x plus 1? Well, you're going to put parentheses around it so that that exponent of x plus 1 now counts towards kind of this, this new form. So this is how you kind of keep this intact. And this is also, by the way, what makes this basic exponential um, equations. If you can't do this, if this is not possible, then you don't have a basic exponential equation and you have to use a totally different technique. So you know right away whether or not you can do it. So if you're in my intermediate algebra class, um, for now this is exactly what you're going to be working with. If you're like in one of my pre-calculus or, or calculus classes, then you know anything's fair game. So that's kind of like the distinction, I guess, there. Okay, so let's move on to the next step. Okay, so next what you want to do is you want to rewrite or simplify the exponents where possible, and you're going to use your rules of exponents here. So once again, on the left side, there's really nothing that we can do, so we just leave this as 2 to the 4x. Now on this side, I'm going to use the power rule, so I'm going to go ahead and distribute that 3 to this x plus 1. So now this becomes 2 to the 3x plus 3. Okay, and now we're actually exactly where we need to be, and, and now we can finish this. So once you have the same base and you have your exponents all simplified, now basically what you can do is you can just set the exponents equal to one another and solve. Okay, so in this case, so I've got, I'm running out of room here, but this is 4x equals 3x plus 3. And you would just solve for x as usual. I'm going to omit the work here. So you would just subtract 3x from each side. And ultimately you would get x equals 3. And so that would be your solution. So these are kind of the, the rules for solving these types of equations. And like I said, you know right away whether or not you have it. If this isn't possible to do, then you have to use another technique, which again, if you're, my, if you're in my intermediate algebra course, then for now you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so we're gonna do some other examples, but hey, while you're here, maybe you consider liking my video or subscribing to my channel or sharing this with a friend, I'm trying to grow this channel. So every little bit helps. So now I have two examples for you to try. So I would recommend that you pause the video here, give these a try, and then hit play when you're ready to see the solution. So starting with this first example, so notice once again, so this 7 to the 5x, you can't really rewrite this, but 49 can be rewritten as 7 squared. So that's really what you're looking to drive everything. And then this other exponent is just kind of coming along for the ride. So I've got 7 squared to the x minus 3 equals 7 to the 5x, and now I can go ahead and use my rules of exponents. So this side will become 2x minus 3, and this will be 7 to the 5x. And now I've got exactly what I need. I've got the same bases. Oops, and I just realized I made an error here, didn't I? Uh, that would be 2x minus 6, my bad. Okay, so now I've got all of this all set up. So now I can just pluck out the exponents and take 2x minus 6 equals 5x. And now I can go ahead and subtract the 2x from each side. So I get negative 6 equals 3x, divide each side by 3, and you get that x equals negative 2. And we're all hunky-dory here. Okay, so I've got another one here for you. If you haven't tried it yet, maybe consider giving this a pause and giving it a go. Hit play when you're ready. Okay, so for this one, notice that it's not like I can write 27 as an exponent of 9, right? So, but you can write 9 and 27 both as exponential expressions with a base of 3. So I can rewrite 9 as 3 squared. So this would be 3 squared to the 4x. And then I can rewrite 27 as 3 to the 3rd. So this is totally a thing that can happen. 
um, and it just depends on the problem. So sometimes you have to rewrite both bases. And the goal here is to have the same base. Again, if you can't do that, then you have to use a different technique. So if I go ahead and simplify this, so now I get 3 to the 8x equals 3 to the 3x plus 12. And so now I can pluck out the exponents. So I get 8x equals 3x plus 12. I can subtract off the 3x. I get 5x equals 12. Divide each side by 5, and I get x equals 12 over 5. And we're good to go. Okay, so I have this set of problems here, so if you'd like to see just a few more, here you go. And you can hit play when you're ready to see the solutions. Okay, so for this one, so I cannot rewrite 5 to the x minus 2 any other way, but 1 over 25, that can be rewritten as 5 to the negative second. So that's kind of like the, the trick, I guess, that you have to notice with this one. And then otherwise, this problem is not so bad, right? Because now you can just take out the exponents. And so then I just add 2 to each side, and I get that x equals 0, which makes sense, right? So how would this, how could this possibly equal 5 to the negative second? x has to be 0 once you take a step back and look at it. Okay, so let's do another one. Now here, the left side cannot be rewritten. It's already in simplest terms, so we're just going to leave it alone. But this other side, so this can actually be rewritten as 3 to the fifth, all of that, to the third, and then all of that, to the x plus 2. So I know it looks a little bit cumbersome, but we're going to get through it. So if I distribute that exponent, uh, let's see, so this is 3 to the fifth to the 2x, and then this is going to be 3 to the fifth, and this becomes 3x plus 6. And now I can take out the exponents because I have the same base. So I've got 2x equals 3x plus 6. I can subtract off the 3x. So I get negative x equals 6. Divide each side by negative 1, and I get x equals negative 6, and I'm good to go. Okay, so now for the last one. So let's see. I have to rewrite both sides now. So this side I'll rewrite as 5 squared and then all of that to the 3x. And this side will be 5 to the third to the x plus 4. So now I can go ahead and distribute. So this becomes 5 to the 6x on this side. And this side will be 5 to the 3x plus 12. And now I can take out the exponents. So I've got 6x e equals 3x plus 12. I can subtract off the 3x from each side. So I get 3x equals 12 divide both sides by 3, and I get x equals 4. And there's the solution. And so that'll do it, guys. Um, that's, that's everything I've got for this particular video, though I have lots of other videos. So hopefully I'll see you guys in another one. Thanks for watching.